Let's start with a song, actually. We need, how about a proper Rakeda intro song? I'll play it out, and then I'll, I'll get to the beef of the situation. There's a message from a Norwegian prude. I was sent to take out a particular dude. Nick's been framed. It was all a dirty gay up. We had it all planted by a dirty gay cop. Mr. Rakeda has got to go, so a little plan was hatched by the local 5-0. No one in this town is even going to know that we planted the guns and the mountain of blow. We're going to lie. Under oath, nothing you can do, so screw you both. Probable cause, who gives a fuck? We're taking down a whore and a big nosed cuck. We have reason to believe that you're abhorrent, so shut up, cuck. The judge signed a warrant. Mr. Rakater had his rights violated while Kayla was getting her ass dilated. We're going to breach right through your door, then tip out your clothes and dirty the floor. Come out, hands up, we won't ask any more. Dispatch, we have four kids, a hot wife, and a whore. We're going to lie. Under oath, nothing you can do, so screw you both. Probable cause, who gives a fuck? We're taking down a whore and a big nosed cuck. All these kids, they look too well. Make them look like they've gone through hell. Take that kid's nice clean shirt. Rub them down with some shit and dirt. Make it look like the parents don't care. So plant some coke in that kid's clean hair. Stack up the charges, make them look like zeros. Plant all the empty cans of SpaghettiOs. Make sure to get his firearms. Don't even worry about Baldy Boy Barton. Plant an AR, stash it under the bed. Just another day of being a faggoty fed. Okay, I'll cut it off there. It's halfway through. I'll put the full version up on the the blog, and it's also in the um the map the internet through the Rakeda thread. So, in the last episode of the Rakeda segment, Rakeda had uh, or I had uh, through counsel filed a motion to um, allow recording in Rakeda's omnibus hearing. Rakeda's omnibus hearing is on the twenty first. It's right around the corner. Um, so it'll be next Friday is the time that I will be talking about the outcome of the omnibus. The omnibus is a very big hearing in Minnesota. Um, it's basically where all pre-trial motions are submitted and handled in one big hearing. So they didn't stagger, they don't stagger the shit out. They don't make it drip feed for years. Um, they take that right to a speedy trial shit pretty seriously. So everything, everything that you want to say about excluding certain things, um, doing certain things before the jury is sworn in and before the actual trial begins, it must be done before the omnibus hearing and the omnibus hearing hears all of it, including interestingly, um, the request to, to record the omnibus hearing. <laughs> so, um, we're going to send in a guy, probably we have one in mind. He's an attorney in Minnesota, um, who will venture out to the uh, small county of Candy, Ohio County, in the central, south central uh, Minnesota, to record the Spicer County, whatever county court handles it. And he'll go there. It's a long ass fucking drive from uh, North Dakota down to Spicer. And then he'll set up his camera or try to come in. And then the very first thing that the judge will have to decide on at the omnibus is if he's going to allow him to record. So it's a big time investment with possibly no payoff. Um, but I think he's going to go anyways. So if he goes anyways, he'll be able to take notes about what happened, uh, which is obviously not as ideal as actually recording it. But he is making the commitment. Um, and I appreciate that. And by the way, uh, there's a chance that he may be retained uh, very briefly for like 20 minutes to handle my petition for the omnibus hearing to be recorded. So if that happens, it's very, very funny that for a brief moment, uh, me, a person of public interest, or I forget the name of my position. I'm not an intervener. I'm just a, a, a public, uh, a member of the public, an interested public person. Um, I will have two attorneys in, in the Rakeda case, and uh, as opposed to the one the Rakeda has, uh, that's just interesting to me. Anyways, uh, that's beside the point. Um, unsurprisingly, kind of. I mean, I I didn't. I was kind of on a toss up if Rakeda would even reply because it's like, what's the point? Like, what's the point of protesting the footage um, the, for the the trial? I mean, the trial the minutes are all public anyway, so why fucking bother? Well, we'll see. Um, I will spare you the full reading of this. 
Um, I went, Sean, uh, potentially criminal, went over it, and I joined him for half of it, and then a little bit more, as he talked about some minutes from another transcript. Uh, but the gist of Ricada's argument is this. Um, first, the actual argument, and then the second, uh, his pathetic, desperate flailing. Um, there is effectively like one sentence in this dedicated to a meritous argument, and that is that in the Minnesota um, uh, procedure rule book, which is uh, drafted by the Supreme Court of the of the state of Minnesota, um, under Rule Four, it says very explicitly that the court shall not permit recording of any pre-trial. Um, pre-trial um, hearings or anything like that, including the omnibus hearing, mentioned by name, the audio omnibus is mentioned by name, um, and basically anything that happens before the jury is sworn in. Um, and the idea is, is that they don't want the jury pool to be poisoned. However, unlike with statutory language, the language shall not is not as concrete in the rules. And um, both Hardin and also uh, White in his response, which I and I think that this entire response is drafted by Ricada, by the way. Just it just reads like that. Um, in particular, uh, this is called this whole thing is called defendant's motion in response to Joshua Moon's motion. Um, that is sloppy. It's not a motion. It's a response to a motion. So it's very weird to call this defendant's motion response to Moon's motion to allow because that's not what it is. It's just a response. It's not a motion in and of itself. That's like a pro se level fuck up. And White seems like a respectable attorney, which kind of indicates to me that Ricada drafted this to save on money. Um, just uh, my, That's just my thought on that. Uh, so the, the, the line... The line in the rule book says shall not, but this rule was violated with the Chauvin trial um, because uh, they deemed that it was of great public importance that the even the pre-trials pre stuff um, be allowed. In fact, there was another line in this before the Chauvin trial that said if the defendant didn't consent to the recording, then uh, it wouldn't be permissible. It was another shall not, but the judge said actually this is of such monumental importance that yeah, we're going to allow it anyways. And then the Supreme Court, against the, his objections, and then the Supreme Court fixed that rule and just removed the defendant's ability to object to this at all. So it is possible that we'll get the omnibus hearing. If not, um, it, we'll have to wait until trial, assuming that it goes to trial. Um, that's the most meritorious thing, and it's basically this paragraph right here, um, right here, argument, when the law, and then he points this shit out. And that's basically it as far as the argument regarding the law. The rest of it is this shit. This guy has a forum account, or had, I've banned it. Um, this guy's name is Jason Close. And in the off chance that Mr. Close is listening to this, I want you to know I fucking despise you. You are the biggest, dumbest, fattest piece of shit. The fact that the government didn't fucking execute you for having child pornography is an abhorrent stain on our justice system. This fucking moron filed a petition to Candy Ohio County for the warrant, claiming to be, quote, a voluntary member of the Kiwi Farms Investig Investigation Group. He is in no way, shape, or form authorized to represent himself as a agent of my fucking website. And his cheeky little motion in private to uh, Candy Ohio County is the basis of 99% of both um, Ricada's ramblings in this fucking document to try and confuse the judge and also the entire basis of Ricada's PR stunt. So this fucking imbecile should kill himself. And I'm willing to say that I know that if he does it, it looks bad on me. It might get me into trouble. Nobody's going to fucking miss a pedophile who goes out. Um, and after collecting child pornography and being convicted of it, goes out and pretends to be somebody else's voluntary member, like for real, go fuck yourself. Did Ricada hire him? <laughs> Maybe. There's actually an interesting thing, though. Um, as much as this pisses me off, and we'll, we'll address it, because I am obviously going to respond to this and say that it's fucking muckraking and bullshit. Um, oh, that's out of order. I'll get to that in a second.
Uh, I did ban him. This is this guy. I changed his name. It was just QRS. The name QRS shows up uh, elsewhere. For instance, chat, it shows up in Ricada Law's Locals group. He's been a uh, unpaid member following Ricardo and Locals since uh, 2022, since September, almost two full years on uh, Locals. He also shows up repeatedly since at least November 2021 in Ricardo's chat. This is just a cursory glance of his old streams. Uh, not only is he an active participant of this guy's live stream, he's a paying member. He's a customer. He has a direct buyer-seller transactional relationship between um, Jason Close, the pedophile, and Nicholas Ricada. Something that cannot be said about his account on the Kiwi Farms. He is not a true and honest supporter. As far as I know, he's never donated to my streams. So he's a special big fan of Nick Ricada. And I'm sure that it upsets him that obviously we're just going to turn that around on him and say, not only, by the way, not only is he also equally a member of Ricada's fandom, if the concern then is that you have a pedophile um, in who is interested in your case and who wants these records, uh, then it actually is in your benefit that this be televised. This guy, despite being a convicted pedophile, is fully able to fly to Spicer, Minnesota, show up at this courthouse, and attend the omnibus hearing in person. Literally nothing stops him. As long as he tells his his you know his officer, if he has travel restrictions, that he's going to Minnesota for uh, a week or whatever, um, that can be arranged. He can attend in person. And if there are minor persons of Ricada's relation in that courthouse, uh, this fucking guy will be in the same building as them, which apparently he's very afraid of. Well, if it's televised then there's no such concern. If there's, there's a safety concern, which it sounds like there is, then television te televising the event would be in your interest because people like this who are in your fan group already, who are members of your um, private service and who pay you money, who seem interested in you, um, they won't be able to attend in person because it will be televised anyways. So we're going to turn that argument on them. Um, there is something special. This doesn't show up on the Kiwi Farms yet. Um, this was sent to me minutes before the stream went live. Um, let me find it really quick. I don't know where I put it. Sorry to, to tease. Do, do, do. I have to be careful if I show this because I'm sharing it through a, a cloud system. Oh, Adobe, can you just fucking let me download this, please? Download this file. There we go. All right, here it is. Here's the big one. Now, I remind you, I this is important because, number one, Ricada said that Jason Close, the pedophile, um, wanted his body cam footage. That's his public statement. Jason Close only petitioned for the warrant, which is already public information. He did not petition for the body cam footage, so that's a lie, straight on its face. The other thing is that Ricada is very, very, very afraid in this um, motion. <laughs> not this response, this motion to a response motion. Um, he's very, very afraid that if his minor children have to testify, then Jason Close might be looking at them through the television in D.C. Well, Ricada, guess what? Kristen Pierce, the first descendant to the Kennedy, Ohio County attorney, writes this in regards to Mr. Judge Wenzel and says, The county takes no position on the motion to audio or video record the proceedings. This case does not involve a victim. If there is, is not a person offense and any testimony by minors is unlikely. The county defers to the court's decision. The prosecuting attorney has stated there will be no minor testimony in this case. You have no grounds to sit behind your kids like a fucking coward and pretend that you're just looking out for their own best interest because they're not fucking testifying and you know that. So this is also Exhibit A in the response. All this shit, this fucking muckraking that he tried to fling around to make everybody on the Kiwi Farms a pedophile guilty by association because of this one fucking idiot is moot. And if anything, the security concerns raised by this only bolster the argument that it should be broadcasted and should not be a public zoo exhibit. Um, I hope you're happy. He's very, very, very smug about this, by the way. 
but I'm patient, chat. I'm patient. I'm willing to wait and see what happens. By the way, um, I'll just mention this to get it out of the way. Uh, Montegraph, or Ricardo was ordered to pay $300 to Montegraph for court fees months ago, and he hasn't paid. So Ricardo is so down bad he can't even afford $300 to Montegraph, who, by the way, is still suing him, and who, if he really wants to, uh, can depose Ricardo and make his life a living fucking hell when he does so. Um, so the omnibus hearing is interesting because in particular, if they are going to accept a plea, they would have to do so at the omnibus hearing. Now there is an interesting issue regarding his omnibus hearing. His issue is this. Riqueda has an attorney. He hired Mr. White as his, uh, as his, um, chosen representative. Kayla has no attorney. She is currently pro se in the case, and she hasn't actually entered an appearance. Since she bonded out, um, she has no representation. Riqueda, uh, uh, her husband, is not her attorney, and she's technically pro se and un unrepresented in the case, which is why we know that Riqueda, or Kayla Riqueda, um, has a plea, plea deal. Because ordinarily, when a plea deal is offered, it is given to the attorney representing the defendant. And there is no record of this on the public docket. If, an, uh, if the plea deal is offered to a private person representing themselves, not through the representation, the state must file an affidavit that they were served this plea deal. And that affidavit is public record. So we know for a fact that Kayla has received a plea deal. We do not know if April or Riqueda have received a plea deal, but they probably have. If they offered it to Kayla, they probably offered it to Riqueda. Um, so I mentioned that the omnibus is on the 21st, and the omnibus is a very big hearing. All pretrial issues must be dealt with at the omnibus. So everything that he would that she would ever want to bring up before the trial begins must be done before the omnibus hearing. But again, she has no attorney. She has filed nothing, and her uh, appearance is on the twenty first, which makes it seem very likely that she will enter a plea deal uh, as a pro se defendant, and she'll just say, "Yeah, I agree to the the terms of their conditions," and the um, cookie cutter plea deal for her charge as a first time offender is two years probation. Um, April is also charged, but she has a public defender, so it's unknown if she will accept the plea deal or what her plan is. I have, after discussing this with a practicing attorney, I have a pet theory about what Riquet is about to do, and if he does it, it's one of the most despicable things that a man could ever possibly fucking do, and I don't want to say what it is, because I feel like what I, what I had proposed is so spineless, so disgusting, um, so cretinous, that Riccato might actually do it. <laughs> it's also a 190 IQ move, um, which a Floridian swamp genius such as myself uh, could come up with. So I'm, te I'm tempted to write my prediction down and send it to somebody I trust, such as like Sean or Alyssa Clips, just as like a, an intermediary, someone who would have no reason to lie. So if I'm right, I can say I'm right, and this motherfucker is such a craven bitch. I could, and so predictable, just the most predictable craven asshole that's ever lived. I can just see him coming a mile away too. So, um, I might, I might do that just as a fun game. I'm, I'm thinking about it because I, I, I kind of want to, I kind of want to tell you what I think is going to happen because I'm pretty sure I'm right. Um, and if I do, you guys will, if what I, what, if what I believe is true, you guys will be so floored at how unbelievable and shameless Nick Riccata is. Uh, it will fuck it. It will actually floor you. It'll, it'll shock you to your fucking core. Send it to Ralph, Ethan Ralph of the kill stream. That's a trustworthy person. If I've ever heard of one, just the name, uh, gives confidence. <laughs> um, so. You have good calls. I'll do it. I'll write it down. I'll send it to Sean. And then he can he can say if I was right or not. But that's basically it. There's a big trial coming up on the 21st, and uh, Riqueda is fighting tooth and nail to try and get this suppressed. And not only is he trying to get it suppressed, he's also using the opportunity with his um, absolute privilege uh, to try and smear everybody involved in this case as a pedophile for reasons unknown to me. 
as I mentioned, it's an ugly and ineffective tactic because you have to understand, and this is why I say this, if you want to go out there, it's a bad idea in general to antagonize an entire community of 12,000 plus daily users. It's a really bad idea to antagonize tens of thousands of people outside of that community um, who have an interest in the proceedings and who might be sympathetic to that forum. Um, to call them pedophiles, though, and to try and commit this kind of libel just out of like pettiness and spite is a really good way to piss off tons of people like more more like like really piss people off and it's just like oh what a faggot like oh this faggot really deserves to get stomped like it's a good way to incite people against you um, which is always a bad idea if you ever invite trouble trouble will find you that's how it works um there's there's another thing that i want to say in regards to that i don't know I don't know what he's doing. I, feel, I mean, I kind of feel bad for him in a way, just because the the behavior that we are witnessing is the behavior of a cornered animal, someone whose like primitive brain is taking over because he's he's a f fearful person and he's um, incapable of taking accountability. And there's a there's a part of me that that winces when I see this kind of whinging. It's like so pathetic that it that it inspires pity like mm, it's not the behavior of a 40 year old father of five it's the behavior of like a 16 year old boy trying to get out of a dui charge you know what i mean it's like uh eh, should be over this by now thank you for watching this clip this is the cac remember to like and subscribe